Okay, so what I was saying about electromagnetic induction is that the current that's induced always flows in such a way to counteract the change in the field that the wire is experiencing. So if I have a wire wrapped around a solenoid, Uh, and I bring a magnet, a bar magnet, close to it with the north end coming close, then the the wire experiences the north getting closer, a stronger stronger field coming close, and it doesn't like that. So it then gets the electrons or the uh, the charged particles of its conventional current dis begin to flow in this wire in such a way to produce a north facing this north coming in to try to stop the field from getting stronger. So it's like that person in your life that doesn't like change. You know, that person that's like, you know, why do you keep putting your book there? And they, they'll move it to the spot they want it. And then at one day you put it in the spot they want it and they move it back to the table. Like they're one of those people that we probably all have in our lives that no matter what you do, they want it a different way. And then when you do it the different way, they want it back to the way it was. So that's the same here. So as I bring this bar magnet closer, the current's going to flow in this wire in such a way to try to prevent it from coming closer, to try to resist the change. So to resist the change, it would want a north facing it, so the current would flow down in the front here. Okay? And so then the magnet is like, okay, fine. You don't want us to come closer. We won't come closer. So going back, see if I could draw this solenoid better this time. That's what the problem was. I was messing it up over there um, so that it wasn't the same. So it should have looked like this. So bringing the north closer, it would come down in the front. So so now the bar magnet's like, fine, you don't want us to come closer, we won't. And so it begins to move away. But now the wire's like, wait, wait, the field's getting weaker. We don't want that. So now the current's going to turn around and flow in the other direction to try to, because it doesn't like a change in field, even if it's the change that it was just protesting against up here. So now it doesn't want it to go away. And so now it wants a south on this side. So it's going to need to flow up to, in the front. Okay, so the electromotive uh, force always induces a current in such a way to try to counteract the, the change in the field. Okay. Um, and maybe I'll copy this note, this page of notes and give it to you tomorrow when you're writing the test. So the current will always flow in such a way to counterbalance the change in the field that it's experiencing. And as a result of the, fl uh, the flow of current, you get a potential difference in the circuit. And that potential difference is, is what we've been calling the electromotive force. We named it before we knew what it was. Okay? Now if we go to this picture here... If I move the wire out of the page, going from north to south, um, with and it's it's going to be electron current. The current will flow down. If I move the wire into the page, the current will flow up. If I move the wire up and down, nothing will happen. Kind of like in this picture. Right? If I were to move the wire in and out of the page, no current will be induced. So the movement of the wire has to cut the magnetic field lines. And really we say like the more field lines it cuts, the more current there's going to be. Because the more field lines it cuts, then that means the stronger the field is at that location and the stronger, the bigger the change in the field at that location. So if I were to just move it in and out of the page, there would be no current because there's no field lines being cut. Remember, it, it has to do with the angle between the field lines and the direction of motion. Okay? Um, and so then one last thing before we take a look at... Um, one last thing on induced... Uh, current before we take a look at your homework questions. And that's something that's called Linz's Law. And Linz's Law is what I was just talking about. An induced EMF always gives rise to a current 
whose magnetic field opposes the original change in flux or in field. So it's back to the current flowing one way when we bring the north closer and then it turning around and flowing the other way when we move it away. Okay? We it, when it goes down, it ex when we move it down here, the field gets weaker, so it flows in a direction to try to make the field stronger. As we move it up, it's now getting stronger again. It flows in such a way to try to prevent that. So it always flows in such a way to, produce, to reduce the uh, change in field. Okay, so that pretty much covers what we were doing yesterday. So I gave you just four questions for homework, and they were on page... 518, I believe. Yes. All right. So, number one, a straight wire that is, um, I can't find the top of my page on the screen, uh, 0.5 meters long is moved straight up through a 0.4 Tesla magnetic field. So, number one, so 0.4 Tesla magnetic field. And it's a wire that's five meters, 0.5 meters long, um, in the horizontal direction at a speed of 20 meters per second. So if it's straight up through a 0.4 magnetic field, it's pointed in the horizontal direction. So the field's going one way, and the wire's moving the other. The angle's going to be 90 degrees. EMF is equal to BLV, sine theta, and so it's just filling in your numbers. So 0.4 times 0.5, which should be 0.2 times 20, times the sine of 90. So do you get 4? Half of 10? Yeah, you get 4. EMF is equal to 4 volts. Number two, oh, wait. the wire is part of a circuit of total resistance 6 amps. What is the current? So in B, you have to do V equals IR, recognizing that these, this EMF is just a V, and so I is equal to V over R. So 4 volts divided by 6 ohms. So I is equal to 2 thirds of an amp, or 0.6 repeating. Number two, a straight wire. 25 meters long, so L is 25 meters, uh, is mounted on an airplane flying at 125 meters per second. The wire moves perpendicular through the Earth's magnetic field, and it's saying at this point the field strength is 5 to the negative 5. You maybe use 5.5. I'm going to use what they tell me in the book and the question. What is the EMF induced? And so again, it's the angle's going to be 90 degrees BLV sine theta. So EMF is equal to 5 to the negative 5 Teslas, 25 meters, and 125 meters per second. It's an awful lot of fives. 3, 4, 5, 5 to the 6th. Uh, so 5 e, e to the negative 5 times 25 times 125, and you get 0 0.15625 volts. Number 3, permanent horseshoe magnet is mounted so the magnetic field lines are vertical. Okay, so the magnetic field lines are vertical, so it must be that the horseshoe magnet is like this. Okay, so much for my 3D. Okay, but the magnetic field lines then are going up and down in it. Um, I'm going to run out of time. A student passes the straight wire between the poles and pulls it towards herself. The current flows in the wire from right to left. So the wire is like this, and we're going to pull it out of the page, and it says the current flows from right, which is this side, to left, and your book always uses conventional, and it, we're pulling it out of the page, and I really can't draw that 3D, but it wants to know where's the pole, so 
the current is going that way, my palm has to go that way, my thumb has to come out of the page, so the field lines have to be going from the bottom to the top.